Crimson Trace now offers a complete line of electronic sights, ranging from a fixed magnification battle sight to reflex sights with the latest power management features. Purpose built and versatile. Find yours at CrimsonTrace.com. Today on Tom Gresham's Gun Talk, live from Six Hour Range Day, Tom's talking with SIG reps about the latest and greatest, including the new Cross Bolt Action Rifle and P320 editions, and a new giveaway. Plus, shady finances for the March of Our Lives group, and more. And as always, call 866-TALK-GUN with your comments, questions, and range reports. And now, here's Tom. Well, all righty, let's just do this thing. I'm Tom Gresham. It is Gun Talk. We are in Las Vegas. We are live from the SHOT Show. Actually, SHOT Show starts in a couple of days. But these days, things begin before they begin. It's kind of weird. We're at uh, the SIG Range Day, SIG Sour, having a bunch of fun out here. We're be showing a lot of new products, talking about some new things, showing machine guns and air guns and pistols and rifles and new calibers and new cartridges and all, all sorts of crazy stuff. Uh, but also, just to let you know, during this show, we're also going to be giving you the updates from Virginia, what's going on there with the big uh, rally tomorrow. This is the uh, regular a lobby day that the BCDL has always had. I mean, it's bigger this year, but a lot of controversy wrapped around that thing. So we'll have a live report from there. We'll also have a report from New Jersey where there are a lot of interesting things going on there on the Second Amendment front. So a lot of news going on out there. If you'd like to be a part of this, of course, all you have to do is call us, 866-TALK-GUN, or just call Tom Talk Gun. Now, it's a pleasure, oh, it's almost a pleasure, to bring in uh, two of my buddies here, Tom Taylor and Phil Strader from SIG. Uh, it's, it's almost always usually kind of good to see you guys so almost Al almost <laughs> how you guys doing we are great it's uh it's always fun to be here this is a such a fun day and actually got beautiful weather and a lot of people oh, it's so incredible it's, it's gonna be like high in 65 and dry and first of all tom, tom taylor if you would explain what the range day the sig range day here is it's we actually two days yeah so we actually have two days today um in the afternoon we'll have a lot of uh sort of the the highest end media folks in the industry are here um they're, you even let me in. To we be with we them. even let Gun Talk Radio in and Tom in, and so that tells you that the bar is not all that high. But there's that. But, but we do let uh, we do let sort of our media partners in, and it's it's only 100 to 125 people, and they get to really test and shoot and film and ask questions and do that sort of thing. And then tomorrow, this this is sort of the precursor to an all day event tomorrow for more media people, but but as importantly, our commercial dealers from the U.S., international customers all over the country. There will be government um, you know, sort of buying offices, law enforcement agencies. I mean, you name it tomorrow. We're expecting as many as 1,200 people tomorrow. Holy cow. And you got, I mean, your top shooters here, you know, you're going to have uh, Lena, you're going to have Daniel, you're going to have Max, and then, oh, yeah, Phil. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, we don't, we don't really put him in with them. Uh, they typically learn to let, keep me out of that. Uh, he used spotlight. to be in that conversation, but, you know, he's... <laughs> Didn't you used to be Phil Strader? <sighs> yeah, back oh, uh, man, 10 years hurts. ago and about 40 pounds ago. Yeah, I know. For those who don't know, we're the top shooters still. Just a uh, hell of a shooter and a lot of fun. One of the things we have so much to talk about today, we're going to be covering, and you guys have, I mean, literally everything from air guns to a new machine gun, right? Yes. First of all, people want to know, what's the machine gun? So the one we have here today, and we're letting some, some uh, people shoot it, is actually the 338 Norma Magnum machine gun. Outstanding. And so this is uh, with our new Fury ammunition, our hybrid three-piece ammunition. You basically have the same sort of ballistic uh, energy as a 50 cal, and so it's it's a much smaller less expensive, super fast, super high energy bullet that gives you most of the same characteristics as a 50 cal. Much, much lighter gun, and uh, we'll be test firing that. But then we also have the, the 6.8 version of that gun um, in a machine gun, and both those guns have been... Uh, that, that new technology, that cartridge technology, is going uh, to upset the apple cart, man. That, that's a whole different deal. Yeah, game to the, the velocities of that round uh, are game-changing, as the U.S. government was looking for some some science that would defeat some of the new body armor and uh you know this does it and and by the way it has great applications in hunting and long-range shooting and all kinds I'll, of I'll things. tell you i don't know if you heard about it i was talking to daniel horner a little earlier he says this is as big a change as moving from black powder to smokeless powder yeah. right? well that's that's quite the claim yeah daniel has a good way of putting it in layman's terms he told me when we first started talking about the concept that it, it takes a 308 on an on a elk for instance when right. you're hunting right and makes it a 300 wind mag so that's the energy. That, that is. That, that's pretty much it, isn't it? Yep. You know, it, it really is. And Phil, you've been around guns, well, all your life and technology and stuff. We've seen 
it, you know, we get jaded. We, we see, yeah, it's a new finish. It's a new color. It's a new thing. And then when somebody says, hey, we've got something really new. And you go, yeah, really sure. Yeah. And then you go, wait, what? What did you just say? You go, yeah. Holy cow. I, uh, yeah, I've, the time I've spent at SIG, I have had a chance to, to see the, some new technology come out. And actually some old technology. Speaking of the red dots and how right. you're going to see a lot more of those out here. It's not new. We've been using red dots on guns. Right, for, and we're going to talk about time. that in just a sec. Yeah. Yes, yeah. But yeah, it's um, it's a lot. It's an awesome chance to see how the technology is evolves, you know, over the course of you know ten years. It's it's almost like we we're in the Stone Age, and all of a sudden we're this is like the revolution. All right, two years ago, sitting right here in this very room, I was talking to you guys, and you said we expect that in a very few years. Self-defense handguns will almost all feature red dot or optics, whether it's red, but, but optical sights. And two years ago, people were going, yeah, you know, I know the competition guys. I mean, you've been using them in competition for how long, Phil? So, uh, since more than 10 the years. First, first time it was used uh, publicly it was in, I think, 90, no, 80, 89. Somebody I think. put Jerry that, Barnhart put one put, on his gun. aim point on it. Yep, yeah. years and years ago. And yeah. um, it just... Obviously, the technology's come a long way, but yeah, yeah. it's it's it's, it's what, been around for a while. But now they are smaller, lighter, and more rugged. That's correct. Would be the, the, the things that immediately pop to mind in, in my head where I'm thinking, okay, what makes them usable where you would literally, literally bet your life on them? Well, obviously, durability is the key, right? right. Uh, the, the, the big roadblock for a lot of people who like to carry concealed and take it pretty seriously, they have said for years they just don't want to trust the, their lives uh, on something electronic. Yeah. And now the technology or the technology we're using in these sites has become uh, so reliable and, and so over the top as far as battery life that you can theoretically just leave the dot on for... 50,000 hours of yeah, runtime. What? It's, yeah, it's like that. Mo How yeah, long years. is 50,000 hours? Oh, four <laughs> and a half years, I think. So if that's you're, constant if, on. If so. you did the whole change them once a year like your smoke alarm batteries, exactly. you're more than mm -hmm. taken care of. Just leave it on. Don't worry about it. Right. Yeah. And the other thing to hitchhike on, and we've talked about competitive shooting, right. but if you think about it, the other precursor to people using red dots with special forces. So many years ago, special forces units started using... Uh, red dot optics, and so I think that also led the demand for something that's reliable. So if your life depends on it, so there were two sort of parallel paths running. Mm -hmm. Competition shooting started a long time ago, and as they got more dependable, special forces units started using them, and now now it's converged to something that's broadly available. And that's not unusual when you look at the history of the firearms, the weapons that special forces use. There are a lot of instances where they have gone to the competitive shooting world. Exactly. Because, I mean, your job as a competitive shooter is to put accurate shots on target quickly. Exactly, yep. I mean, and if you're a special forces or a SWAT team, your job is to put accurate shots on target quickly. Exactly right. Yep. I mean, and I know, I mean, you, you've worked with them. I mean, I know, uh, you know, you talk about, you know, Robbie, all the top shooters have gone and worked with special forces people and said, because that's our job. Right. We, put, we put shots on target quickly. And if I told you, you got to go shoot a competition with a handgun, choose anything you want, speed event, you're going to put a red dot on it. Yes. Right? Yes. I mean, you really are. I'm not making this up. No, I, it's, it, it's been proven years for years and after, over years. It's, it's, not, it's not new news that shooting a red dot makes the hard shots easier and once you practice with it and get pretty good with it, it makes your shooting faster. Um, so no one can ever take that away from the use of a red dot. That's always the way it's been. But now that it's becoming more and more popular and there's, there needed to be a catalyst of, oh, yeah, you carry a red dot on your gun, right? And, and it's, it's, it, but because back in the day, you would see it one in a 50 times. You'd see somebody with a red dot on a gun and he would just assume that, you know, they're just trying to play operator. Yeah, they're, they're doing it. Now it's, now it's just commonplace. I mean, I was just training with a guy who's a SWAT team uh, fireman instructor and his everyday gun is, you know, it's got a red dot on it. Right. So, I mean, there's, now I, I guess we probably ought to at least mention, by the way, SIG's in the optics world. 
you know, and, and have been for several years now. I mean, and you guys didn't decide to dabble in optics. You like dove into the deep end of the pool and went underwater and came up with all this stuff. Yeah, I mean, that was the vision some time ago was to say that <clears throat> let's find a way to get red dots on a gun and make it part of everyday life. And and so three years ago, we said, you know, there's there's many companies that make red dots. There's many companies that make guns, but there's not a company that marries those two things together. Okay. So the gun coming out of the factory, the ability to pick up the phone and call the optics team or even the ammunition team when it comes to testing for, for zeroing and sighting and right. accuracy and those kinds of things. So, Because you guys make all of that, ammo, guns, and, and optics. So we make all of it. So there's been a lot of barriers to entry, one being the intimidation of, of installing it, and in some cases having to take it to a gunsmith to get your slide cut or whatever. And yep. then now there's a lot of slide cuts. So now it comes down to, do I, do I know how to install this if I'm just an average you know, guy going to buy a gun or lady going to buy a gun, can I install it? And so now, you know, having one company that makes everything, we can put the, the optics on the gun, and, and maybe also as importantly, is cost. Because there's no middleman between us. And then the last thing that's really important is, let's say your dot goes down. Do you call it the gun company or do you call it optic company? And having those two companies not pointing at each other saying, well... Yeah, well, yeah it's their you, problem. It's that's pro yeah, right. Well, and... <laughs> You skipped over one little thing there that you're assuming that everybody understands, which is you now are offering guns that come already equipped with a red dot. Yeah. So that, and that, I mean, yeah, it's, I it's skip over I that. I mean, it's, it's like, okay, forget it. You don't have to worry about mounting it. And when you get, take it out of the box, it's got the red dot on it. Right. Indeed. And so that's, and that's something that we want to do from soup to nuts, whether it's one of our 320s or one of our classic guns or now even the 365 XL that has a slide cut with a new Romeo Zero nice. on it, which, is a, which now you've gone all the way from competition shooting to professional duty shooting to, you know, every day going to the range, shooting more accurately, faster to a, a, a setup that actually is very conducive for carrying Every day carry. Right. Yeah. Why yeah. wouldn't you? In fact, I mean, we, our, our, if you look at our new price list there, you're hard pressed to find anything, at least anything in the polymer lineup that isn't either equipped with an optic or ready to or, be equipped. Or with set an up for Yeah. It. Optic ready or optic equipped. I think we have maybe three SKUs total that don't have an optic on them or are ready to accept an optic. All right, so uh, take a breath here, because when we come back, I gotta take a break. I wanna talk about how people can learn to shoot red dots, because there's there's a learning curve involved. There is. You know, and how do you do it? How do you make the transition? How do you get better at it? And what do you need to know? Because there are some things here that are a little bit different. So we'll talk about that when we come back. We're uh, live from Las Vegas at the SHOT Show. We're actually at the the SIG Range Day out at the Clark County Shooting Complex, an incredible facility out here. 866-TALK-GUN uh, is our number. I'm Tom Gresham. We'll be right back. Trouble is unpredictable. It shows up without warning. It rears its ugly head when and where you least expect it. Trouble has no conscience, no regrets, no remorse. Be prepared and protected with the MC1 SC subcompact 9mm pistol by Mossberg. Yes, Mossberg, the company trusted by police and military for decades. The MC1 SC subcompact 9mm pistol. Small, powerful, snag free. Always with you. Available with night sights or laser. Mossberg.com. Since 1937, Ducks Unlimited has led the charge on wetlands and waterfowl conservation. Wetlands reduce the effects of flooding and recharge our drinking water. But perhaps most importantly, they allow us to experience what makes the outdoors so great. Band together to rescue our wetlands. Mental health and guns. At Walk the Talk America, we're working with both the mental health community and the gun industry. Created by a gun industry veteran, Walk the Talk America seeks to raise awareness and create change through suicide prevention and firearm safety without legislation. We strive to eliminate the prejudice that firearms and mental health face. For more information and to support Walk the Talk America, please visit walkthetalkamerica.org. 
Tactical professionals who put their lives on the line every day depend on Surefire. Since 1979, Surefire has designed, machined, and assembled the finest flashlights, weapon-mounted lights, hearing protection, and suppressors right here in the U.S. Surefire, offering a best-in-class warranty and customer service, and used by more military special operations, SWAT teams, and hard-use end-users than any other brand. Surefire, American-built, American-strong. Visit Surefire.com. That's Surefire.com. <laughs> All right, it's live radio. We are right here with uh, the SIG event here. We got Tom Taylor. We got Phil Strader here. We're swapping stories. Actually, Jim's asking questions during the break of, hey, can I modify my 365? And you're going, well, you might want to wait on that. Because, <laughs> <laughs> as we like to say, but wait, there's more coming, right? There's always more there's coming. Always more always coming. There's, always, there's always more at SIG, right? So. Yeah, there, there really seems to be. It's crazy. Uh, you call this thing the red dot revolution. Why? Yeah, so, I mean, it's just something that at SHOT Show we're launching a whole campaign around the Red Dot Revolution. We're giving away Velcro patches, stickers, buttons, poker chips. Um, it's just a, something that we want to talk about is that, you know, we've said two years ago, as you mentioned, that we've been saying this is coming. Right. And, and, you know, whether it's three years from now or five years from now, much like the revolution with ARs 10, 15 years ago, we think this is coming with handguns, and so we think we're the best uh, option because we're the company that makes the optic, we're the company that makes the gun, and we really want to lead that sort of revolution into into people being able to, to shoot red dots and be effective, accurate, fast, all the things that we've talked about. So it's it's pretty exciting, and so we're gonna we're gonna go full court press on trying to make sure that it's a, a big part of our our gun culture. Phil, as a shooter, I mean you you've been through the transition as a competitive shooter. When you first start with a red dot. You're actually probably a little bit slower with it, aren't you? you? Absolutely are, yes. You really are, because because why? Well, here's the reason. If you use iron sights all the time, you know, right. you're you've gotten used to what not what a just just a sight picture looks like as far as you know, your front sight aligned, your rear sight aligned, and taking a shot and keeping the focus on the mostly on the front sight. Right. That in and of itself is uh, it's something you ingrain into your your psyche but when you become pretty good at shooting there is an element of and this is going to go a little deeper but this is That's important right. to know but there's an element of misalignment of the sights that you know is an acceptable amount of misalignment ah. so at seven yards if i know my, my front sight is slightly over to the left and high i still know i'm going to get a decent shot you can on take target. that shot you're going to score right. fine exactly because i've i've learned that what an acceptable sight picture looks like okay okay when you go to a red dot you're and I, I'm saying this because I am going through this still when, oh, yeah? when I shoot carry optics with a red dot. When you shoot a red dot, your instinct is to make sure that the dot is perfectly centered on the A zone and perfectly centered in the screen. Right. And as if Max were sitting here right next to us tell, to tell you, that's not always needed. There is also an acceptable amount of quote unquote misalignment with red dots and, I mean, and the screen. Case in point, if the A zone is whatever it is, seven inches across, eight inches across, right? anywhere in there is an A. That's correct. And, and, there, and that's all good enough. That is. And that actually applies in self-defense shooting as well, that's, to a certain extent. You're correct. Now, you know what I'm hearing? When you're talking, I'm hearing something else, which is people I watch shooting rifles with rifle scopes, and they shoot off the bench all the time. And everything's perfect. It's perfectly lined up. And they get on an animal, and they can't pull the trigger because the crosshairs are slightly moving. Right. Everywhere it's moving is fine. Exactly. Well, just, just pull the trigger. That's going to be. You're going to hit. Trick it. is to minimize the movement and understand that. But the, but understand it's going to be moving. It's going to be moving, and the, that's another uh, hurdle with or shooting a red dot is people have to notice is when you hold uh, iron sights out in front of you, it's not easy to see the movement. It's you know it's it's uh, much less noticeable. Sure. But when you put a red dot out there, especially a 3MOA or something really small on a pistol, you see everything. Yeah, I mean, you, you see, see it wobbling and moving, and you're, moving, and you're trying to keep it from moving, right. which does several things. One, it's going to slow you down right, right off the bat. But also, if you're working on trying to keep it from moving, you're screwing up your grip and your trigger press, aren't exactly, you? Exactly, because you're trying to put, you're trying to make that shot go off in an instant. You want to yank it. You saw it. You end up yanking you it. You see it in the middle. And you, just yeah. like the iron sights, you, you know, there's an acceptable amount of float. You have to learn what the acceptable amount of float is with a red dot at your, at your given distances. Now, self-defense, it's not as 
uh, necessary, but it, it, there is still that element of, of adjustment uh, as, that you have to make with the red dot as far as the float and the wiggle and the wobble and everything you're going to see and the focus. Now all of your focus can go strictly on the target, which is a, a really seriously important self-defense aspect yes. of red dot shooting is now I can completely put you're, all my focus. You're watching the threat. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. you're just putting the dot between your eye and the threat. So it also helps not only in target focus, which is important on uh, in self-defense scenarios, because that's what you're going to do anyway. You're going to focus on the on the threat and the threat's mm -hmm. hands, as you should. Right. But now you've got an optic or you've got a sight on the gun that's not detrimental to keep the focus on the target. Now you actually have a dot that's superimposed on the target, and uh, it makes it a heck of a lot easier to take that shot. And uh, Building off of that, if you're going to be part of the red dot revolution, if you're going to go with a red dot on whether it's your target gun or your carry gun or your, your home defense gun, then what you need to do is go out and practice and listen to what you just talked about and say, okay, I understand these are things that are going to happen to me when I get out there. That's correct. And I need to just be aware that just get out there and shoot, 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 draw. And dry fire or drawing practice is really important because when you come out of your holster, you've got to get it aligned right because people say, well, I can't find the red dot. Right. Well, if you go do 200 practice draws, of course. You will end up finding the red dot, right? Yes, it's not intuitive. Shooting a red dot isn't as intuitive as people think it is. You still are the sight. the The red dot is not exactly where the sights would be when you put the gun in front of you. So you have to learn what your presentation is, where the dot's going to be, how to adjust. If you don't see the dot exactly in the screen right. where it is, how to quickly adjust and snap it back down. There's a lot of there's a lot of learning curves involved in shooting a red dot, which is why I I personally. And I, I know this is counter counterintuitive, but I personally don't like red dots on my competition gun because I know I have to practice <laughs> to get better at it. Because right now I'm I'm still in that mode where I got to have the dot in the middle of the target, and I can't. Yeah, but you've I also have it you've also thrown a million. I mean, not kidding, a million rounds down range. I mean, your age, I, I your age know. changing is going to be really hard. I yeah, <laughs> I know, right? I don't know if I've shot. I I typically have shot a lot less rounds than most, but uh, I can say that I have seen iron sights in front of my face a lot in dry fire, and it's, it's, a, it's a tough learning curve, but I can tell you that no matter who you are or what your level of shooting is, the shots are easier with a red dot. And Faster no and design. easier, and you're going to be better at it. Uh, the whole lineup of SIGs, uh, red dots, all of those on the website now? On the website, here at the range, most of our guns have them in the booth. They're all over the gun, so we, we just want people to see this revolution and, coming and, and over go to your, like. Go to a shooting range where they rent guns, where you can try the red dots, because you guys are working with ranges and have them available. That's when you're really going to figure it out, right? Absolutely. All right. Thank you, guys. Sixthour.com, right? Is that the website. Very good. All right. So I'd like you to go out, and Tom, if you would work with Phil. He needs a little work on the shooting thing, you know, the whole. I got him. Right. I got him. All right. You got, you're going to take care of that? Yeah, All right, I got Phil. Him. Phil, we'd like to have you back again, but I, we're not going to. I so. need his years and years and years and years of experience to help me out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, be right back with more Gun Talk. What's so hard to understand about shall not be infringed? Here's Tom. No kidding. And speaking of uh, shall not be infringed, of course, we have the event, the uh, it is the lobby day tomorrow in Virginia, Richmond, Virginia. A lot of coverage of that, a lot of misinformation, a lot of purposefully wrong information being sent out about the Virginia lobby day. Look, here's the deal. And I know there may, they may have 100,000 people show up for this. They may have more than that. Uh, the governor has issued an emergency declaration, no guns in the area, sealed off. Now they're putting up fences. You have to go through like 11 or 17 different metal detectors, no guns in the area. And now the state is saying, well, you know, we're only going to let in a certain number of people who would like to come in and petition their government on the lobby day. First of all, let me back up. The VCDL, the Virginia Citizens Defense League, has been holding lobby day for more than 10 years. It's always been peaceful. It's always been respectful. They go in and they talk to the legislators and they tell them, you know, what they feel about gun regulations. There's no reason this would be any different. But this governor has decided because there are gun bills being introduced because the Democrats took over control of the state assembly with the help of Michael Bloomberg's money. He's decided that now's the chance for them to label gun owners as violent, dangerous white supremacists. And that's what they're saying. 
And so now they're saying, you know, we're only going to let in a certain number of people, but we're not going to tell you how many that is. Imagine that. People are coming to lobby the legislature. They are there to exercise their First Amendment free speech rights. And the governor is saying, yeah, well, only a certain number of you are going to get to exercise your free speech rights. We're only going to let a certain number of you in. We're not going to tell you how many that is. We'll just shut it off. The governor is exacerbating this situation. He is the one who is portraying gun owners as violent, as white. I mean, and the whole idea of them being white supremacists is the funniest thing in the world, since I always remember all of my African-American friends in the gun community, the Second Amendment activists who are black, I don't think they are white supremacists. I'm pretty sure I've asked them. They said they're not, so I take them at their word. This is dangerous. And I know there are some people who are saying, well, you know, this is the resistance. Well, yeah, yeah, I know. And some are saying, you know, don't let them tell you what to do. I get that. I understand what you're saying. At the same time, there's a flashpoint here, and there are some people for whom it would be advantageous for them, the gun ban lobby, for something to go wrong. I wouldn't be surprised if there are not false flag actors in the middle of this thing as well. It's all going to play out tomorrow in Richmond. I would encourage you, if you are within range of it, you ought to go on down there. Get there early. See what's going on. Uh, they're not going to let you in with their gun into the state capitol grounds, but if you want to walk around town, and I think my guess is they're going to let a few thousand people in, maybe, and maybe tens and tens and tens of thousands of people will not be let in, but they'll be out on the street. And being out on the street's okay, because now you have a presence. We have a presence. We're there. I'll keep saying, show up, speak up, stand up. You got to be there. Uh, so I would just encourage you to be there, but, and, and I know it drives some of our people crazy when I say this, but here's the deal. When you, if you know of somebody who's planning to cause a real problem here, who's going to cause us massive PR problems, try to get them not to. Try to get them not to be there. And look, here's the deal. Let me just be real blunt. This VCDL Lobby Day, which goes on every year, is not about statues. It's not about race. It's not about anything else. It's about guns and Second Amendment. If those are your issues, please stay away. If those are your issues, go away. Go do something else. Don't mess up this thing because this has been going on for years and it's been very, very effective for the Second Amendment activist. And I know that people say, well, you know, we have to fight back. Yeah, okay. Let me give you an example. In Chicago, they had been doing this for years, for decades. And yeah, people say, yeah, well, that's Chicago. Yes, but they've made huge, huge inroads in Chicago. They have far more gun rights. They have far more abilities to own guns, to carry guns, conceal carry for heaven's sakes. How do they get there? They got there by showing up and being there and working the system. I mean, you have to understand the PR that's going on here. The public relations efforts of trying to smear us gun owners, the men and women who support the Second Amendment, there's a big effort, and the media is going to be a part of this, to say these are people that you know we need to restrict. These are those kind of people. Talking about you and me here, okay? These are people you need to be afraid of. And if you can get the public to be afraid of any group, the public has been traditionally, historically, throughout all written history, willing to do almost any type of restriction or action against a group of people that they are afraid of. And that's part of what's going on here. Do not play into that. All right? We're the good guys and gals. I think we need to remember that as we go through this thing. So the question I would like to throw out, are you going? Are you going to Lobby Day tomorrow in Richmond? If you are, let me know. How are you going to get there? Because there are bus, buses set up. People are traveling. People are leaving like 11 o'clock tonight, traveling all night to get there all the way across the state. Uh, our number is 866-TALK-GUN or Tom Talk Gun. Are you going to Richmond? And do you have thoughts about the resistance? I mean, 
whether you agree with me or disagree with me, let's have that conversation. 866-TALK-GUN. For 25 years, Crimson Trace has led the industry in laser and light technology and customer service. Now, Crimson Trace is proud to offer electronic sights and rifle scopes for tactical, target, and hunting applications with the same Crimson Trace offer of free batteries for life on all products. The new rifle scope line is also backed by an unconditional lifetime warranty from the brand that you have trusted for over two decades. Find out more at CrimsonTrace.com. Visit guntalk.com slash win to enter Gun Talk's current giveaway brought to you by Sig Sauer. Four grand prize winners will receive one of the following. The new Sig Sauer Cross Bolt Action Rifle, Sig's BDX Ballistic Data Exchange System, the P320 X5 Legion Pistol, or the Sig P320 X Full Romeo 1 Pro Pistol. Enter now through February 14th at guntalk.com slash win. For 36 years, the U.S. Sportsmen's Alliance has been fighting to protect hunting, fishing, and trapping for sportsmen from coast to coast. Today, we are under constant attack from extremist animal rights groups who want to end your ability to hunt in the U.S. Join us to protect our sporting heritage and our way of life outdoors. To join or for more information on how you can help, go to ussportsmen.org. That's ussportsmen.org. It's the next generation target pistol, the SW22 Victory from Smith & Wesson. Stainless steel frame, interchangeable match barrel, thumb safety, fiber optic sights, and a Picatinny rail. The SW22 Victory is ready for anything, targets or small game. Also available with a threaded barrel or cryptic camo finish. And it's backed by the Smith & Wesson Lifetime Service Policy. Learn more about the SW22 Victory at smith-wesson.com. Welcome back to Gun Talk. 866-TALK-GUN. We'll get, I'm, 866-TALK-GUN. We'll get you in here every single time. Or just call Tom Talk Gun. We're over at the, the SIG event. It is the range day at the SHOT Show. And we'll be having a lot more news there. By the way, we're doing this massive, huge giveaway. If you go to guntalk.com slash win, four different prizes. Giving away the new SIG Cross Bolt Action Rifle. Uh, in 6.5 Creedmoor, incredible. Uh, we'll also give away a BDX system, the Kilo 1600 Rangefinder, Sierra 3 BDX Rifle Scope. Uh, another package is their pistol, the P320 X5 Legion. Another package, people are going to win all these things. Uh, another P320 with a full Romeo 1 Pro uh, red dot sight on it. Go to guntalk.com slash win, and you can enter for a chance to win. A lot of things going on in the Second Amendment world out there, and one of the folks we tap into occasionally because he's always on top of is Evan Knappen from New Jersey. Evan, how are you, sir? Hey, great. Thanks for uh, giving me a call. Appreciate it. You, you bet. So I understand that uh, you know, you've got some things going on in New Jersey, and I know people are looking at Virginia right now, but New Jersey, while a lot of people have thought of it as a lost cause, actually you've been making some progress there, haven't you? Yeah, we've been slow but sure, and what we're, what I'm trying to do now is, you know, I've been a big believer in national reciprocity, and, you know, you've traced the legislative attempts at us trying to get it, and at the moment we're not able to get it anywhere. So what I'm looking to do here is try to get it established via the uh, judicial system by way of court decision. So what we've done is we've brought a civil rights action uh, for full faith and credit to try to get New Jersey, which doesn't recognize any other state's license, mm -hmm. to the detriment of tens of thousands, you know, causing folks to be imprisoned and everything else, right. to finally have to recognize it. And we've structured the case very carefully because the two plaintiffs, one from Georgia and the other from Delaware, both of those licenses are issued by courts. And you see, New Jersey's license is issued by the court. Okay. I think that gives us the strongest argument for full faith and credit, because what we're looking to have enforced is essentially court judgments. 
And that's okay, the let, point of it. So let me jump in here. The, 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 let, me, let, me, let me jump in yeah. because the, the whole idea of the full faith and credit uh, part of the Constitution is basically it's how you can have a driver's license in one state and it's honored in other states. Uh, and the idea, and we've asked this question for years and years, if that's the case, then your carry permit should be covered under full faith and credit. And if you are issued a carry permit by one state, it should be honored in other states just the same way that your driver's license is. Is that kind of the concept we're working with here? It, sort of, basically. What it is, driver's license, you have this thing, the driver's license compact that states have signed into. But full faith and credit, which is also requiring states to honor other states' process, such as marriage licenses, that's true, mm. birth certificates, but also judgments, so that if you get a judgment in one state and need to enforce it in another, the other state won't say, oh, that's from the other state. We're not going to honor that, because that's what caused a big mess under the Articles of Confederation. So when okay. we formed the Constitution, we put in full faith and credit. So the incremental way to get the gain here, I believe, to give it the strongest possible chance of success is to have it be court-issued licenses in a state like New Jersey, ironically, which is so tough, but their license is court-issued. So how can one court say we're not going to listen to another court of another state? And that's mm -hmm. the essence of full faith and credit. Now, once we get that, once we win this, mm -hmm. then there's a multitude of doors that open up. Other states might make their licenses court-issued, and then you'll have national carry on your license because of mm. what this case could establish. Or we could try to get non-court-issued licenses recognized in the same way by arguing right. equal protection or other arguments. So this is the first step to put a crack in New Jersey's uh, uh, armor on stopping individuals from being able to carry that are licensed in other states. Huh. Okay, so what's going to be the process? Where do you go with this, and uh, when will we know something? Well, we filed it, of course, right at the beginning, so we're going to be fighting it out in the federal court. And remember, it's a federal, it's a federal court action, so we're dealing with the constitutional issue, which is in the U.S. Constitution, so I'm glad to get out of New Jersey's court. <laughs> I know you are. Trying to do this. And they're going to have to argue and show why this judgment shouldn't. And remember, we not only have the uh, license that has been issued by the court, but we also went and got the judgment certified, as you need to do when you're going to enforce interstate under full faith and credit. So we've already had the judges in those other states certify as needed under the statute. So I think we've put the best case forward, and it's really an issue of, first impression, but heck, it's a constitutional right as well as a constitutional mandate to honor these things. So I think we're going to have a good fight, and we may be able to see national reciprocity come about in this way. Is there anything that uh, gun owners around the country can do to help with your effort? Well, yeah, I would. Uh, it, we do have a GoFundMe, uh, which they could check out. In, we had a nice article uh out there in ammo land that's uh, been all over and it, you can read about it and uh, uh, just go to the GoFundMe. Any of that would be uh, okay. helpful. We're going to have it. Yep. So uh, thank you for that. And we'll keep you informed as the progress. Um, you know, it's going to be, they're going to, you know, it's not going to happen without New Jersey, you know, kicking and screaming. You know that. Of course. They don't want us defending ourselves. They want us to be victims, not defenders. So, uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, if you go, if folks will go to uh, evolad.com, they can find the article uh, about this, what's right. going on in New Jersey. It's got the link in there for the GoFundMe. Evan, thank you so much. And keep fighting the fight. I know that you're always pushing, man. We are, and you got to be in the arena. We got to keep, you can't give up. Just got to keep fighting. Thanks, man. You bet. You take care. Yeah, that's exactly it. You got to be in the arena. You got to keep fighting. You got to stand up. You got to show up. You got to speak up. That's what's going on in Virginia. Hey, tell you what, when we come back, uh, we've got a couple of field reporters. 
<laughs> uh, Ryan and KJ just dropped in here. They've been out uh, walking around the SIG event here, looking at some cool stuff. Going to give us kind of the, the quick, uh, like, three-minute version, the speed-reading version of, of what's going on out there. If you'd like to join us, of course, it's 866-TALK-GUN. I'm Tom Gresham. We're at the SHOT Show, actually pre-SHOT Show, uh, at the SIG event at the Clark County Shooting Complex, which, if you've never been here, is an amazing facility. It just goes, stretches out over acres and acres and acres. This is the kind of place that a shooting range ought to be. All right, be right back in just a minute. I'm Tom Gresham. We're uh, at the SIG event here at the SHOT Show. There's a lot of different events going on. We just happened to be at the, the SIG event today. And uh, Ryan and KJ, Ryan Gresham and uh, Kevin Jarnigan, you've been out wandering around. You came back and went, hey, we found something out there. There's a story. So what'd you find? Yeah. So um, we're out there and there are a lot of other vendors here besides the SIG Sour guys. Okay. And there's there's steel targets. There's yeah. holsters. There's clothing. There's, clothing. there's, there's I mean, clothing. There's like car accessory, truck accessory oh, yeah. stuff. But we were just talking to a guy. But out being there. who you are, you guys found liquor. <laughs> uh, yes. Well, yeah. Well, you know, it's <laughs> Vegas. Uh, we're talking to Scott out there. We we see horse soldier bourbon. We go. Tell us more. First, you went bourbon. Bourbon. bourbon? Yeah, that's you the had, first. You had thought. me at bourbon. <laughs> yeah, um, really cool bottles. And so we just started talking to him. Go, what's the deal with this horse soldier thing? Well, he and a couple other guys from the company are the ones who the, the movie Twelve Strong, the real true story. One of the first eff efforts into Afghanistan. Into Afghanistan. Yes. yes. And ended up having to use horses yes. to get around. That was their mode of transportation, and they became. So he's, they're one of these guys. Yeah, these guys are, I guess, you know, out of the military now and decided to start a business, and they started this bourbon company. And he had a great little story about um, they're just getting started. Yeah. Didn't have a lot of money, and they went to a bottle manufacturer. And to get a mold made for a bottle is $60,000. Holy smoke. So he's walking around. And he said, well, what if I could get you the steel, the steel you need to make this? And the guy's like, well, I mean, we need a lot of steel. He said, well, just what if I could get you the steel? Would there be a discount there? And goes, yeah, I think we could probably do that. He said, so I kind of have a connection. And I sent them 10 tons of steel from the World Trade Center. No. So every bottle is made with steel from the World Trade Center. Holy cow. That's a, that cool? a great That's story. a great story. The name of the product is? It's Horse Soldier Bourbon. Wow. Um, yeah, or, and yeah, it's, it's HorseSoldierBourbon.com. So as as, uh, as you look at, you know, in the bourbon section where you, you know, look at right. the store, look for it. I don't think they're in all 50 states yet, Not but yet. obviously they're trying to get there. And they wow. have a they have a straight, a small batch, and then a, a barrel strength, it looks like. And I mean, it, <laughs> 100, 110 yeah, proof. 110 one proof. One Hello, yeah. buddy. So you better hold on to your socks when you're drinking that's that one. You, that's when you say, what happened yesterday? I don't remember it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, KJ, you had something happen on the uh, airplane. Oh, you got to talk about this. We always, it's a quick story. We always do and like find weird stories places but i'm you know i i'm very much a hashtag flat bill guns hat you know i wear it everywhere you wear a flat bill hat that yes. has hashtag guns yes oh. that's all it says okay. you know nothing else all right um i sit down the couple next to me they were from california uh, burbank area and they could not like they said oh my gosh we love your hat we love your hat and <laughs> and they go well can can I buy it from you? And I was like, no, I'm, I'm not gonna sell. They go, will you take a hundred bucks? A <laughs> hundred bucks for your hat? A hundred bucks. Well, and you wear the hashtag guns hat, and you said it starts conversations with. People. It does all the time. It, it, By the way, he didn't sell his hat. Oh, I did not sell that. Oh, no. hat. That, that's a, almost yeah. a one of a kind. But you know, you do. You start conversations with that, and you never know what you're gonna get. Never know what you're gonna get. These people are they're great, great people. They were just you know they were in New Orleans, just having a good time, enjoying uh, you know LSU's national championship and. And just on vacation, and they say, you know, we love guns. Our family, we all shoot. Um, we just happen to be in yep. California. Yeah. And, you and never know. You yeah. never know. You I mean, never know. And I know people make assumptions about, oh, California, they're not a good gun state. Actually, <laughs> there's a ton of gun owners in California. Maybe, maybe more there than anywhere else. Yeah. You yeah. Know? So, yeah, they just, they just got to work with the political system, and it, that's why we keep saying – the solution to all this may end up being in the courts because some of these places you're not going to be able to vote them out. They've taken over control, and it, you're not going to be able to, and that's why we got to win in the courts. But I also love the fact that you're starting the conversation. Just wearing the hat. Just wear the hat. You know, just, just bring it up. Don't miss a chance to bring up the yep. whole idea of the subject of guns. Yep, so, absolutely. All right. all right, so your assignment now is to go back out there and find us something else 
that you could tell us that you that's cool because I like bourbon. You did real well uh, with the bourbon, <laughs> but all you brought me was a folder. You didn't bring me any bourbon. <laughs> yeah, we'll so I mean, um, the, the, the folder's nice, you know, but the, but the bourbon is a whole different deal. Okay. The guns have to go up, and then the bourbon can come out. That's, that's right. It. Once the guns are away, then the bourbon can come out. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Eight six six Talk Gun. We'll be back from Sig Day at Shot Show.